Bubba Bubba gum again. No, I'm not passing through shit. Well, what are you passing through then? Shit. I don't really understand. No need, no need to understand. I'm done, it's alright, I'm okay. done. Okay. <gasps> Holly, look. This isn't it beautiful. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? What the hell is that? I just shat out a PS1 game. Doesn't it look just like its mother? <laughs> Was this supposed to be a foreshadowing metaphor? <laughs> yes, it was. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful pee. Oh my goodness, I completely forgot to include the categories intro in my last video about Toy Story Racer. I hope nobody noticed, but I guess from me bringing attention to it now, I can't hide it from those who never noticed it. Ah, Kathy, woe is you. Why do you dig yourself into deep art? Okay, to make up for that glaring mistake in the last video, I'm going to give you a second intro right now, because I know you love it so much. <laughs> right, where was I? So yeah, welcome to the Kennecker Show, where I always have to do the ditty ditty of deciding whether or not things deserve to be slaughtered or salvaged. And today, we're talking about a PS1 game. And it's a classic. It's one everybody knows and everybody loves. And I think you've heard of it. It's called Sabrina the Teenage Bit. A bitch in time. We cover things like this a lot on the show. Welcome to the underworld. Or I guess you could call it a bitching time. Makes it a very different game then, but either way it's a good title, I like it. Sabrina the Teenage Witch was a show. I know absolutely nothing about it. So who could be better than me to talk about a PS1 game straight from the universe of the show? I don't even know why I get myself into these messes anymore. Let's see if the box can sell me on anything. Uh oh, wait. Or oh, whoever I bought this from was a naughty Jason. Because they stole it from the library. Check for booklet. Okay, Mr. Library Rental Game. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely still there. Oh, hey, look, I remember this. This was my favorite brand new Sabrina adventure back in the day. B13542709 5. I mean, the booklet does look like someone drowned it in wine many years ago. And the pages are all crispy and wavy, but it, it's definitely okay, front cover. No need to check for the manual anymore. What's on the back of the box then? Warning! Withdrawn! Withdrawn! Extracted this at the end of time! We learnt nothing from the back of the box, but what's the game like? Asylum Entertainment? <laughs> yeah, I'll need to be sent to an asylum after playing through this shit. Hello? I thought I was playing Sabrina, not fucking Resident Evil. What's with the ominous empty menu with isolated clicking? Hmm, new game? Sounds like a great idea. How about Alien Trilogy? So we begin with a magical cutscene with things floating in a bedroom and a zip opens in the sky, allowing a talking black cat to pass through from another dimension. Wait, what? Did you try to steal your file from the witch's council office again? I don't know, did you try your impression of a fish again? Come on! Let's see what really happened. Okay, before you guys carry on, I'm afraid I'll have to interrupt you with yet another edition of the top whatever number reasons this intro makes no fucking sense whatsoever. One, why did you even ask the cat if he did a bad thing if you can just open a magical TV set that answers every question you ever ask. Two, what's going on? Introductions? Who are you? Are you bitch? How about you, cat? Why can you talk? What's the setup here? Three, the cat's in trouble because he was in the clouds one day trying to get a file. Why? What's the relevance to anything with that? Four, why the fuck does that happen? Why did he bother trying this if he tried to steal the file again, apparently? Didn't he know any of this would happen? Five, the cat flies off and breaks this ultra-valuable clock that for some reason not only controls time, but has a fucking mechanical devil inside it, so these two have to go and get the pieces back to get rid of the devil. But why was this thing even anywhere near here in the first place, and why was such an important piece of equipment just hanging around for any random stranger to steal, or even worse, easily destroy? Six, why didn't you kill the cat? You've given a chance to stop you. Seven, why does your hair look like the cover of a fucking Beach Boys album? You will never succeed. Now that I'm free, chaos will prevail. We are furious! I mean, I know I haven't got a clue about Sabrina already, but to give me this little information to start with and expect me to just roll with it is really annoying and makes me want to just throw the controller at the TV and then I can't play your game anymore, so what have you accomplished with any of that, eh? Either way, we need to stop this thing from ruining our fun time of making things float around a bedroom, I guess. What an epic plot. Well, let's go. There's no time like the present. Well, there used to be. <laughs> Whoa, this is like the inside of a giant clock. <gasps> Wait, that's it. This must be how I find the pieces of the cosmic clock. So we only just found out about time destroying itself, and then here we are immediately in the exact place we just so happened to be in order to fix everything. What fucking luck. Dear 
God, what is going on here? Is this normal? What is this moon language? And now we can start moving. Oh, oh, oh dear. What's interesting though is that recently I got really, really sick after a hospital trip and I was unlucky enough to come back and then make it even worse by food poisoning myself with badly reheated meatballs. I'm not a chef. And no joke, I spent the entire night vomiting and I counted an individual seven times that I threw up into a bowl which by five in the morning looked like I was just coughing up little teaspoons of orange squash. I basically emptied my stomach lining. As you can imagine, after all that happened, my stomach was in immense pain after all of that vomiting that I did the night before and it felt like that someone had kicked and grinded into my stomach with a pair of studded football boots. If you want to follow the events of the next time I poison myself in real time, follow my Twitter now. The funny thing though is that my stomach hasn't felt like that for weeks. Until I started playing Sabrina. I mean, isn't that just the most marvelous coincidence? I didn't know Sabrina's magic was actually real. It's coming right out of the game and making me feel sick. Amazing stuff, Sabrina. 10 out of 10 with a hen from a pig pen in Big Ben while I kiss Dutchmen. Aside from making me feel queasy, though, the game is certainly doing a good job of making me laugh. Just look at this picture. What a sight for sore eyes. I'm sure the legions of Sabrina fans were thrilled with the way their favorite characters moved like this in their highly anticipated PS1 dying game. Ever seen a camel move around like this? Well, I I have, and now I know I never need to go to a safari. This extraordinary performance is a male camel's way of attracting the attention of a passing female. I know you can all practically see perfectly well how horrendously this piece of dirt must play, but to be honest, there is so much wrong with this game that I couldn't be bothered to explain it in depth on each individual point and just decided to list them. You'll quickly understand what I mean though, don't worry. You move as slow as a tree and you constantly feel like you're running on ice. Pickups are way too tiny and you are way too thin, meaning that you run around in circles half the time just trying to grab one thing. Maybe Sabrina's character model could do with a few KFCs. Instead of animating these things to roll back and forth, they instead make them turn around at the tip of each side of the the ramp. Whenever you cast a limited spell to shrink, freeze, or flip enemies upside down, or actually attack with a homing unlimited zap, it's impossible to tell when you're actually hitting anything. And some enemies you can't hit at all, but you'll never know that unless you waste time and health being a dick trying to figure it out. You have a look around feature, but no aiming mode. You can't lock on, dodge, or strafe an attack at the same time, so if someone throws something at you, tough shit. You think you can fire back and run away at the same time, or maybe even, heaven forbid, attack and then run away in time? Of course not. And by the way, Sabrina's model is too thin to grab gems, but if you come across a spiky crystal poo on the floor, you don't even need to touch it to hurt you. I'm not even near that. Look, you're essentially damaging Sabrina's fucking electromagnetic heat waves more than her own damn body. Maybe she's got really long leg hair or something, I don't know. If you pause the game during speech, the game glitches out and repeats the same there speech is, every folks. time you unpause the game. There he is, folks. 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 Every level is built and designed identically, only with different colors and skins. Every enemy does the same thing, either run into you or throw something. And once you figure out that bigger enemies can't be attacked and that the limited spell books you find actually appear more in the stages than actual attackable enemies, you can just run past everything without a care in the world, avoid the invincible ones, spell cast all of the smaller enemies for one hit kills, making the unlimited pathetic zap ability pointless. And even if a special limited spell doesn't kill an enemy, run past anyway because enemies don't drop anything if you kill them, so even if you have a one-hit stun spell, it might as well be a one-hit kill for how quick it takes you to run past them. And jumping, jumping is the worst. You fly into the air as high as a kite, but have little to no distance in your jump, making the simplest of gaps damage you, even if you're right on the edge of the fucking platform. Or it can kill you, you know, that's, that's something. What's this? Why is a kid's sitcom a platforming game anyway? I mean, I know Bubsy is one of the worst things that the planet has ever birthed, but at least the cartoon came out after the game, not the other way around. Around. And hey, even if it was, basing a platformer on an animated slapstick cartoon at least makes more sense than... Oh, these beans are lame. Oh, and they melt in your hands. <laughs> this? Despite the front of the box's promise, I'm definitely not having a bitching time. I want my money back. Ugh, look at this. I can't describe in any more desperation how vile this game is to play. And it's meant for a younger demographic. God Damn it! Why do you need to be so irritating, gay? You know, that's what you are. You are as annoying as an itch. Yes, stop being annoying, Sabrina the Teenage Itch. There are also these checkpoints in the stage, and the cat Salem appears and gives you some fantastic advice, like... Don't play with baby mammoths. And... Get more gems. 
But don't worry, Salem, that was already in my plans. And most of the time, he just recycles through the same exact 10 quotes over and over again. At this rate, you're gonna live forever. At this rate, you're gonna live forever. It's my Sabrini. It's my Sabrini. <laughs> While Sabrina replies with the same 10 recycled quotes in random places all over again. I gotta run all over the place and you get to zip around in a bubble? I gotta run all over the place and you get to zip around in a bubble? By the way, I finished level 3, been playing the game for about 9 minutes and I've already finished 15% of the entire thing, so you can smart mouth me all you want, cat, but the joke's on you since you're in Sabrina the Teenage Bitch on PS1. Why does Sabrina need a cat anyway? Why can't she get a dog? Dogs are the best. Have you ever seen a dog in a video game? They're amazing. <laughs> Dogs are the best, sort your shit out, Sabrina the Teenage Bitch. Oh, come on, man, that's not fair. Oh, shut up, Slug Cat, you're not even a real cat! Well, fuck you, then. Stan! Huh? Do you want a... Bonio? Paul? Lie down. Roll over. Meh. Good enough. <laughs> I mean, what more can I say, really? The bosses guarding each piece of the clock you need are a total joke, and hey, boss 2 even uses enemies that you can attack in the entire stage against you. But now you can't attack them anymore, that's fair. The camera only works whenever it feels like it because of the amount of cramped spaces and pointless obstacle placement. The collectibles you need in every stage are insultingly easy to grab, even easier than crystals in Crash 2. There are dress code doors you can unlock by buying one piece of clothing with every 100 gems in the stages you collect, and even items hidden away in other time periods locking access to other items in the other stages, but why even bother? What, you wanna come back here? and revisit this level. I had no idea that something so by the numbers and lacking in a single original idea could be this bad. I mean, you'd think at least that if you were gonna rip off a style of game, you'd rip off the awesome style of gameplay and the visual style and the controls and things of other more successful platformers from years before. There are barely any secrets as well, so there's literally no point even making the levels as branchy and long as they are. Why not focus on making straighter levels that are more tightly designed and don't make you jump in the air as straight as a thrusting erection? I can't do it anymore. This is just fucking terrible. What have you got to say for yourself, Salem. It's my Sabrini! Obviously this game gets slaughtered, but let's be real, for Sabrina the Teenage Bitch, the game deserves only the bitchiest of punishments in the form of a bitch slap. <laughs> and as always, if it's your bitch day to birthday today watching this video, happy frick of birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. Bitch powers activate! <laughs> Thanks for watching this video, everybody, and please stay tuned for the outtakes. It'll be on in just a second, because this video today has been sponsored by chrono.gg forward slash caddy. And you might want to go to the description to check it out and bookmark the site right now, because it is an incredible place where every single 24 hours, a new Steam game goes up for sale at the most ridiculous percentage off, sometimes at the cheapest the game has ever been. Some of the best games I've ever played have been featured for sale, and like I said, every single day there is a new offer, all at chrono.gg forward slash caddy in the description. So enjoy the games, everybody, and thanks so much for listening. What the fuck are they even doing? We weren't warned about any of this. Lie down. Roll over. You know this. Good acting, okay. Poop. You're an you're actor. Lie down. <laughs>